I'd like to call the order of the East Central Drainage Meeting. Uh, it is the August 11th, I'm sorry, September 11th, 2017. Uh, all commissioners are present except Mr. Turner. Mr. Clua, would you please lend us in yes. the invocation followed yeah, by the pledge? Please stand in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for this great country in America. We ask that you continue to look down on us and keep us with open minds. Lord, it's with great sorrow that we come back to the sixth anniversary of the 9-11 terrorist attack, an event that opened the eyes to everyone in the world. We ask that you take care of all the folks that have lost family and loved ones during that event. Lord, it's with a special blessing we ask that you look upon the people of Florida also as we've been praying for the people for Texas. These people in Florida are getting beat up right now. We ask that you bring them through safely. We ask this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thanks everyone for uh, for coming. Anyone wishing to sign, uh, speak on any agenda item, please sign in with Miss Deb. We uh, also need to uh, add to the agenda. Uh, we have a PLD agreement. Uh, Mr. Ruse and Mr. Kluot, we had a meeting last week on this. Uh, you mind giving them a little heads up on uh, before we add this? I'll give it. Mr. Kluot, can you? Yes, I will. Okay. Uh, what we're asking to come to the agenda tonight is basically uh, with the Law Ridge Levy Extension project that we've been working with, uh, some going on 13, 14 years easy, and um, we're getting close on it. And to date, uh, uh, Mr. Poirier and Mr. Blaine Sheets here representing the Pontrain Levy District, but uh, they've been putting out millions of dollars toward this project so far on the engineering, and they had a budget for 3.5 million for the uh, for the uh, wetlands okay. mitigation, and of course it's their market, not ours. So uh, right now that budget's being blown based on the cost of the wetlands, the specific types of wetlands that we need to mitigate. So what we what I'm asking for is a uh, come forward to this committee tonight to appropriate a million dollars not to exceed for mitigation for the large levy extension. Move to add that to the agenda. Second. Move by Mr. Dawson, second, second. by Mr. Johnny. We're going to put that at 6A. Yeah, You're going to have to do that. Roll call. Vote roll call. Now. Okay. Roll call, Mr. Dawson. Commissioner Bill Dawson. Yes. Commissioner Daniel Satterley? Yes. Commissioner Randy Kula? Yes. Commissioner Alan Lawless? Yes. Commissioner Terry Capo? Yes. Commissioner Todd Lambert? Yes. Commissioner John Cagnolotti? Yes. Jimmy Johnson? Yes. Chairman Kula? Yes. <laughs> we'll put that at 6A. Uh, thanks, everyone, for uh, agreeing to this. Move on to number four, acceptance of the minutes for the August 7th meeting. Second. Move by Ms. Terry. Second. Second by Mr. Todd. Accepted. No chairman report. We move on to number six, trans report, Mr. Rue. Yes, sir. Uh, Commissioner, we sent you some reports last week as uh, part of the packet, and I'm going to go straight to any uh, questions and concerns that you may have. Mr. Dawson. I don't have any at this time. Mr. Sadler? I don't, but for the record, I'd like to thank you, Bill, um, so we have this ahead of time. Ms. 
flow. None right now. Thank you. Mr. Roy. No question or concerns at this time on that report. We'll continue on down, Mr. Chairman. None at this time. Thank Mr. you. Good. None at this time. Mr. Johnson. Bill, uh, Garcon Road, we recently replaced that bridge with that box cover. It looks like we had some issues in that last rain event. I uh, understand they're looking at that. We're going to go ahead and, and potentially move with a bigger box mm -hmm. in that area and realign it with the ditch a little bit better. Is that right? That's correct. Uh, we reevaluated the drainage uh, coming to the cover and determined that it has to be a larger size to go there to accommodate a 25-year event. So we are, uh, have ordered the uh, covers to go there, a larger box, and as soon as it comes in, we'll be, be replacing it. One of the things we need to look at is along the ditch between Garcon and Burke Road. Mm -hmm. Looks like there was some hold up in there as well. I know we've had some issues in the past in getting approval from the landowner to clear that out. We're, sure. If we increase that amount of flow through there, we're probably going to need to get some, some work done in between those two roadways and make sure we don't bottleneck it there and cause some issues downstream. That's correct. It's, in fact, there are several places uh, that we, we're looking at uh, improving. And on the agenda tonight, uh, also the bridges that in question on Bird Island Ditch, we're going for bids on them, uh, your approval to go for bids. So that's downstream of this uh, Gorson uh, crossing. And again, it should improve everything through that area. Okay, thank you. Mr. Dawson. Uh, did not relative to the report, Bill, but we have some people here from Sorrento mm -hmm. tonight. And I wanted to, if you don't mind, talk about the improvements that you're making at Main Street, uh, Highway 22, and generally that drainage uh, across Main Street and, and Sorrento and, and how that will affect, I guess, both sides of it. Yes, sir. And if you remember back, uh, we had uh, some issues during the big flood. It had some uh, some uh, uh, problems uh, with the backflow, which served a purpose at that time. It prevented some of the backflow from coming in there. But uh, we do not have enough, uh, did not have enough capacity going through that ditch all the way up to Brittany Street, the three major ditches, A, B, and C. So what we're proposing to do, and, and I mentioned it uh, during the meeting in Sorrento, but our overall plan for that basin is to enlarge the reservoir two or three times the size, the actual drainage uh, basin within the levee section of that reservoir. Enlarge that, increase the pumping capacity at Sorrento, and open up those ditches, A, B, C, and uh, C ditches all the way through Sorrento and all the crossings, upgrade all the crossings, and then improve that ditch, especially B ditch, all the way up into Brittany and close to the Kluwat crossing of, of uh, the, uh, the railroad tracks and try to get a lot of that drainage that usually comes to Brittany Street and down Kluwat Ditch from stacking up. We'll have a place for it to go within the basin. That's our, will be the parish's first area-wide or basin-wide detention basin. And we're gonna, hopefully we'll do that in that basin. Be able to drain everything that can't flow uh, naturally uh, through the Kluwat Ditch and, and, and when uh, Conway overflows onto Brittany Street and in all that area through there, be able to have it come down to the, uh, this area-wide detention and be pumped out on the downstream side of, uh, of Sorrento and Conway. So that's our overall plan. Some of the crossings that we are doing right now will fit into that overall plan. And this is one of the projects that we're recommending to be in the mitigation plan uh, for the $33 billion that we'll be getting for, uh, from, the, from the FEMA and, uh, and GOSEP. So, it fits into their overall plan. We're getting started on some problem areas right now to get a better flow coming through to drain the, the west side and northwest side of uh, Sorrento. So has there uh, been an evaluation of the <coughs> pump capacity based on the increased capacity? We're having that done now. Okay. And, and because that plays into, uh, a, like I said, the, the bigger uh, project, the, the mega project of making an area-wide detention, we have to, to figure out uh, under the worst case scenario, and, and not the August 16 flood, but on a normal overtopping of Conway and Ball Bayou, overflowing into the Kluwat Ditch, Hardison Road area, uh, and Brittany Street, how we can get that water down, how much water is coming to Sorrento because of that, and how we can effectively and efficiently open up the ditches where we're not causing any adverse effects to the people of Sorrento, but able to be able to carry that water to the detention area and pump it out, 
we have in the process of evaluating all of that right now. Okay, thank you. Okay, appreciate you. Uh, let me get Mr. Turner in. Uh, Mr. Turner, you you have anything on the drainage report? And I'm a, I'm able to answer any question like projects, anything okay. that okay. you may have a concern. Instead of going through a general report, specific questions, I'll be glad to to uh, try to answer. Yeah, but we did have a slight problem with the, uh, the new subdivision they built on 73 near the corner of Carnegie. Um, that detention pond they're building that is overflowing every time it rains. Um, did anybody ever go out there to check that out? I think we have a complaint on it, and it's in the process of being evaluated right now to try to determine the problems. Okay, and how long before somebody's out there? I can let you know something tomorrow. I don't want to give you an answer right now, and it, it's not uh, correct. I can give you an exact uh, date that we can uh, have some kind of results of an investigation. Okay. And we, we'll call you tomorrow with that information. I appreciate that. Okay. Mr. Aaron. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Rue, thank you. Um, the Muddy Creek clearing the rip rapping, where do we stand on that? <coughs> oh, uh, Muddy Creek, we, yeah, we're Muddy about Creek. halfway up Muddy Creek right now. Um, the We pulled off for some other issues and everything. We're going back, and uh, since it's dry weather, it's perfect time to get back on that and uh, and proceed with it. Um, now, to give you an exact schedule, I can send that to you and give you some information tomorrow on that, too. Okay. You know, more precise schedule. That'd be great. Okay. Um, I know we've had some issues with uh, the corner of Springwood and Westlake Drive and Jefferson Crossing. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a long term, about a decade of flooding people in their houses there where they can't get out because it floods the streets. We're going to create a berm, but I think we talked to one homeowner that said if you create a berm and block it, it could put water into his house. That was going to be a short-term solution, but it's not going to work. Where do we stand on that? Uh, well, we have made a decision. We have to go in and remove and enlarge the coverts, all the crossing, driveway crossing along Charleston, uh, taking that down to where it's trying to go right now. And uh, we've determined that the uh, coverts uh, along those frontages are not adequate. And so we have decided, DPW decided, to replace all those coverts, upsize everything. Okay. Catch basins. It's a pretty ma a big project to do it, and, and we right now we're in the design phase of what exactly what size coverage needs to go in there, and exactly how we can fit it into that uh, that area of coverage. We don't have a lot of space in that road ditch, but that's what needs to be done to take all that water out that way. Okay, I'll, it's great to be able to report that back to them because I know they they worry very much about it. Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Glover. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Bill, we we talked before the meeting, but I just wanted to make clear the the problem that we were having at the end of Stringer Bridge Road with the uh, with the homeowner developing all all the land and putting putting water back and some issues on Tipo Lane that curled around back mm -hmm. Buxton subdivision, and you uh, you feel like on that the Bateman Ditch feel like you got something going now. Yes, sir. We are going to start that project with hopefully if the weather stays as nice as it is within a week or so of reestablishing a ditch that was plugged up or was stopped up. Uh, reestablishing that ditch and then continuing that uh, improvement all the way to the crossing of uh, Stringer Bridge Road and that ditch where it crosses. Uh, that's the first phase of the project. After that, we're going to work with the property owners and the people that live across Stringer Bridge uh, to the east of Stringer Bridge and try to get approval to go through their property, do some snagging and some uh, shredding but some uh, betterment of that section of the ditch to get it on out to Black Bayou on the bottom side of uh, Stringer Bridge. So, but we definitely are going to be in there doing ditch improvements uh, up to Stringer Bridge within a week or two. And, and just on the, <coughs> the guy that <coughs> was developing the land, uh, we, you know, this has been about a year and a half. We've been discussing this, and... Uh, he talked about there was really nothing we could do based on the fact that he had a simple division of land, which uh, really needs to be looked into. And, um, uh, you know, until he gets a permit to build a house or something, well, he, he's, he's got something there the size of a, it's big. And then they have also something else. They got a house that's being built right now. Mm -hmm. So is, is there any, any, anything goes into effect when he comes in for that permit after that land's built up? Not really. Uh, and I guess not I'm not present Cody code. also is that, right. well, you know, just take note. We, we've got to we've got to try to work with something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our present code doesn't uh, handle anything like this, doesn't uh, have regulations controlling too much of that. I can say, though, 
uh, that that is a, uh, a typical uh, si uh, situation that we're going to be looking at. Uh, one of the first situations we're looking at is that type of uh, problem when we get into the floodplain management uh, uh, process that we're going through right now because it's I'm not, I can tell you up front, some of the first things coming out of uh, this process is uh, to make everybody understand, the developers and everybody understand that uh, the limitation of fill is, is going, going to be there. Uh, no fill is in a lot of areas will be in that plan. Uh, open areas for us allow uh, the free flow of water, both headwater and backwater for storage and flow will be in that plan. It has to be. And uh, sheet flow. Sheet flow, uh, impervious surfaces will have to be in the plan, and it has to go along <coughs> with anybody that has a piece of property, no matter it's development or uh, a, a simple subdivision or family partition or a single person single building, homeowner. single home. Uh, it has to apply equally across the board, and uh, we have to look at all of these uh, problems and solutions to all those problems, and that is part of this floodplain management. And we'll be some of the things that we initially going to be looking at bringing to y'all in, in the initial report uh, coming back to y'all, hopefully in, in 60 to 90 days. Well, so, well, when that comes, we, we need to have that yes. and again, somewhat this resolution is not being, ready. This is not the entire uh, you know, report for us, ordinances and everything else. That's going to take a long time to institute a lot of this stuff. But the, the, the basic format of what you're looking at through a typical plan like this will be in this initial report. Okay, and on another subject, and I know we got a speaker here, Mr. Dedom's here, but based on what we've been trying to work with him for a year or so on that, uh, in our conversations for the last couple of weeks, we talked about some of the, uh, we're running into the fact that if uh, servitude was signed 20 years ago, you know, uh, post 2000, I don't remember what's that cutoff date or when, what, that in some areas that we had a lot of uh, rite of passage but not necessarily servitude. And we definitely uh, didn't didn't buy, but, you know, people gave us servitude. So Mr. Dedon's case, we what we got is we've got something that was put down wrong, some mm -hmm. culverts, and it's in, a, in an existing servitude, and we got to try to do something to straighten it out. And he has another issue that, that's also with somebody building land on side of him. But I'm gonna let Mr. Dedon speak if it's, if if the chair would allow the speaker to come up. He signed yeah, we have, speech. Yeah, we have two speakers on uh, Drain's report. Mm -hmm. Mr. Matt. Thank y'all. What I gotta do to this, make this thing come up. There you go. You got oh, it. it okay. But anyways, they have a, Daddy had 13 acres of property, and he subdivided and gave it to all the kids. And on this piece of property, this ditch has been there since I can remember. And uh, the neighbors needed to use, needed drainage. And so they came to us, and the parents came to us, and so my brother signed the right of way, the, they moved the ditch on the property line and he signed this for right of way and for you, and then it says if you read the document, the parish is supposed to maintain it. And now it was done in 19, May of 1992 or April of 92, but the point is we done let three or four other people back then come into this ditch that was on our property. And now I can't get my water through the ditch because I got my neighbor. He decides he don't want water going through it, undoubtedly. I don't know what the deal is. But anyway, I need some help from, from the parish. I mean, I pay drainage tax like everybody else. And, I, and I, my land is uh, at eight-foot elevation. The ground level is eight-foot elevation. And when it rains, I got this much water in the back because it used to go through that ditch, and now it can't get there. And mostly, my daddy, he's 88, and he's getting stuck in his backyard. He's been living there, and he gave my nephew the land. But anyway, if y'all can help me any, I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. I, Matt. And I know y'all ruled a while back, and I didn't hear anything else about it, so I was just basically 
coming up and let y'all know, hey, look, I, got a, I still need help. I got a problem. Anything y'all can do to help me, I appreciate it. And so I got the document. Now, whether it's legal or not, it's stamped, notarized, and I don't know what it takes to be legal anymore. If this ain't oh, this legal, recorded in that court, you all right? Yeah. Give it to Mr. Rule, get a copy to him, and we'll we'll get on it. I can say that we have had uh, since 2000, when I started work here, we started having problems with servitude agreements, and uh, for the last 10, 15 years, we have been upgrading old <coughs> servitude agreements because they really not worth too much. You really get down to it. They don't have enough information on it for what's guaranteed and everything like this. Uh, so when we come across an older servitude like this, we go out to do work, we talk to the property owners, and we have them uh, re-sign a, a better agreement with the parish, and we actually record it in the courthouse and everything. Uh, so in most cases, it holds up with the property owner. We don't have that much of a problem. Well, Bill, well, Bill but he, won't even, he won't even open a ditch up for his grandpa to mm -hmm. drain water through it. If you go there, if he's got to resign, I can tell you now, he ain't going to resign it's crap. Right. Now, we have two issues with that. If, in fact, the, the servitude is vague or we don't have a servitude, but if it's a drainage ditch, and again, Cody can, can attest to this, if it's a drainage ditch, either natural or, uh, or uh, man-made, uh, even if we don't have servitude, if somebody's impacting that ditch for filling it in or stopping it up or impacting the drainage through it, the uh, state law allows us to go in and remove the obstruction. First, mandate that he remove it. Uh, if not, then by, uh, by court order, we can go in there and remove the obstruction. And we have done that before. Uh, so can we, more, can we get people. something? Uh, this, this came up back in, I guess, February or sometime. Yeah, several months and, ago. And <coughs> yeah, and, can, and it was said then that uh, papers were trying to be certified letters sent to this landowner mm -hmm. and he's just not accepting he's them. He's not accepting them. So we talked then in that meeting about we got a constable, can we have somebody serve a paper? Can we ask him to remove the the uh, obstruction and then if he don't remove it then we, we get a court order and go rem remove it ourselves. Uh, I'm just can trying to get the process to work for when, the people, when, that's all. When we initially looked at this one, there was a survey map that was provided that didn't show any servitude. So now I'm seeing this agreement for the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, what? We didn't run an abstract no. or anything on it, but it's very vague. It doesn't really outline where there's a servitude. It just says the rerouting of a yeah. ditch. I think we had to, we had the agreement the last time. Okay. Well, it's a, it's just vague as to it doesn't really say the original location of the ditch, where it was rerouted to, anything along those lines. I know it's probably been subdivided it, it, since. Excuse, there was some no, no, this piece. The is, ditch has been there. All the they done was piece. move it over ten foot on the property line. I mean, they didn't reroute nothing. Put your mic down. Okay. You know, I mean, it, it, I, I don't know. Yeah, it might be vague, but I don't think they needed very much information because it says we're moving the ditch 10 foot over so the other landowners can use do the drainage, and they were running sewer, so we asked the parish to maintain it because before we could cut it with, a, with our lawnmower, the ditch, because there was never no sewer in it, you know. Mm -hmm. And so now, but... But, I, yeah, I mean, I'm not an attorney either, so, I mean, look, I, I'm, I'm here for you. But to help that's, me. that's the first time I remember seeing that document. Mm -hmm. I know I've seen a map that didn't have a servitude, and yeah. I know I got with Deborah on some more details. So I'm going to pull yeah. that from the clerk's office, Yeah. and then I'll get with Bill, and we'll talk about yeah. I know you all already authorized Thank you, Cody. With so suits, if, you could, if you could look into <coughs> it, because when we go back to a landowner, and I'm going to speak for see. a lot of people that's not in this room right now, when we force them to a personal position, them against their neighbor, uh, I've had people tell me they're going, they're going to some legal firm, and the legal firm is saying this, well, they, they're going to start off with thirty to fifty thousand dollars cost them just, just to get a ditch back opened up that's been a servitude ditch for fifty years or better, you know. So let's let's try to research it, see if you can come back and give us an answer on it. All right, Cody. Thanks. And I'll give you an example on this. What we're trying to correct is, you know, it's they wrote it back then so vague. Uh, basically, it says here that uh, reroute uh, drainage ditch about 10 foot west of existing field, old ditch, blah, 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 blah. It don't say anything how much servitude we got, if it's 5 foot, 10 foot, no, you know, in center of the <coughs> ditch. And that's major issues we have with all these old servitudes that we have to rewrite and, and, uh, and uh, put it in a, a present form that's, that's more exact. And we know everybody can reach back out and right. get them a lawyer, okay, today, all right? 
but the fact is at some point we we've, we've got to find some respect some respect for that piece of paper right okay because they were asked to go do it legally and it was done legally at the time so please research that and see what we can do for this this particular landowner and probably got 40 more of them stacked up just like that yeah. uh, we have a lot more than 40. <laughs> yeah well <laughs> i just Maybe. i just got 40. that's right okay um and i have no more questions for you mr rue we'll talk about the law ridge levy extension when that time comes in 6a okay thank you mr clue the next speaker was mr quint quintmore on the drainage report Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> Forgive me the opportunity to speak today. Um, I wanted to talk uh, on two issues. I wanted to thank the uh, drainage department for turning the pumps on early uh, for the Harvey. It uh, allowed uh, drawdown for capacity. I would uh, encourage this board to get a report every time the pumps are turned on to look at the different elevations at the different uh, water levels throughout the parish and the cause and effect of, of turning them on, the positive cause and effect. I also want to state the two water gauges nearest on the outside actually went down instead of mm -hmm. up, which is a claim that other parishes are constantly making about us turning the pumps on and flooding them when they're actually gauges. And I'll come back and speak on that matter if you'd, if you'd like me to. I wanted to talk a little bit more about a more pressing issue. Uh, I have some photos. I can either put them on here or let's pass them around, Chairman, or whatever which one you'd like. Just put them on over here. All right, this is uh, the Bridge Holy Rotary Church. Mm -hmm. um, I would consider this uh, critical. These are uh, Bayou Francois. I, would, I surveyed the three major waterways in the river, uh, Bayou Francois and Severio. Um, this is uh, from this weekend. You can obviously see the amount of debris and logs and everything else. And... Um, this is a certainly an issue. Um, this is John Savoy Road off 22. As you can see, there's, mm -hmm. there's two tires that float here. They're stuck because of the amount of debris from the bottom up. Now, normally tires would just float on through. So obviously, you know, this needs to be cleaned out before the next storm. Um, and then that's just regular maintenance. This is off uh, Corner View on New River. You can see some major log issues. Half the, half the bridge is completely blocked. And as uh, storms continue, more and more debris will start to pile on these. This is closer to Highway 73. Here is another bridge. We can see it just continues to accumulate. Now, um, I, didn't, I didn't survey the, the minor canals, uh, Black Bayou. Uh, the three branches of the Goudin and others that feed into these three majors. Okay, the, I just wanted to go ahead and get an idea of the three majors at this as today. Um, what I would encourage this board to request is that a maintenance schedule be performed after every major storm, anytime the pumps are turned on for a complete inspection of all major canals leading to the Marvin Bro pumping station. Um, I did want to say and point out in uh, Councilman Turner's district and Councilman Casso's, y'all's was the worst. I would say that you're at, at critical, critical stage. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of silt coming in from that new subdivision pouring into New River. Uh, the, mur the water was completely <coughs> murky on, a on several beautiful days of sunny weather, and you can have a lot of feel there. The water levels was about six inches deep. There was concrete slabs, bricks, trees falling in. Um, the walkway to the church right there, corner view where it meets right there, completely clustered with limbs. And, and I would say those are critical. And that, that byway runs behind this castle subdivisions coming off 74. So all that water that goes to New River off those subdivisions has to go through that, that canal. And, and I would say that's, that's at critical levels. Um, what I would suggest, since this maintenance probably should occur yesterday, would be to start tomorrow. Three-man crew, some ropes, grappling hooks, capstan winch, can clear a lot of this debris. You really want to get efficient a two-man boat crew in addition. 
could, could clear these in, in, in days, especially in the deeper parts. Um, the areas that I spoke to about Ms. Kesso require dredging material. You're going to require heavy machinery to open those, those channels up and some, including some spraying for vegetation. Um, what I would suggest is in addition to an annual report of, of inspection of all, all canals, and this includes Henderson pumps too, we don't want to disregard any other part of the parish. Anything as, as well as Sorrento and as well as uh, others is, a, is an annual report, but also a report after every major storm that these things have been inspected and that each councilman receive a report for their district so they can answer the questions to any concerned citizen, yes, I've got that inspection report. My ditches are clean. They've been clean and I got them on this date. Do you have a problem? We're gonna get right on it because they should be clean because they've been inspected. And then we have, have a ability to make sure that these things are opened up during major storms. Mr. Chairman, I appreciate the time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Anything on the drainage report before we move on to PLD? One thing. Go ahead, Mr. Tosh. Pump 7, uh, Bill, where are we at on pump 7? Well, at, should at we should start, be able to start it within the next two weeks. Okay. Before the end of the month. I knew we were close. That's right. Just... And, and the re main reason because we had damage to the coil that uh, from the crane that caused it to be, have to be repaired and we had to send it off come and get it back. So... Uh, right now, we are looking at toward the end of the month to be able to start it up, run it, test it, and then it should be fully operational after that. Appreciate it. Mr. Dawson. No, not on drainage, but I should have brought this up at the beginning. Just wanted to uh, take a minute, go to the order type thing. Uh, if you look, the monitors have been replaced, and, and we have new monitors up here. This is, uh, you know, more clearly we could obviously see when, when they had the uh, – you know, had the display up here, and all our displays have been updated. I wanted to just take a minute now. John, Brandon, Brandon, Marshall, and Lester, and, and Kyle, to a certain extent, have, uh, you know, put a lot of effort into this, and, and I think, uh, you know, we've finally seen the fruits of it. Very good job. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sally. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and um, uh, thank, thank you, um, Mr. Rue, for your report. Um, before we, we move to the specifics that I see listed in our package, I would like to make a comment about what Mr. Clint Clintmore just said. Um, Mr. Chairman, I highly, highly recommend that this commission, um, in whatever way we can do this, in addition to, as Clint said, an annual inspection report of our, our, our three majors and, and even other ditches, that we do instigate post-storm event inspections. Um, and it seems to me that that would be important because if you wait in a whole year or whatever, however we currently doing it, and we're not looking after the events, right after the events is when these, these problems can can occur. And then, and then on the heels of that, if you have another event, it can be really, really problematic. So we are all knowledgeable that we are in the throes right now of SSA making all kinds of recommendations to uh, increase the efficiency of this parish and um, in, in, in terms of the different departments and of course one department, the drainage department being ever, ever so important now. Um, I would like to see some SOPs written that would incorporate um, what I'm just gonna label as post-storm event inspections um, and whoever's writing those SO SOPs. Um, I don't know if, if we need to just in any way other than just encourage our our folks to do it or in the form of a motion or anything more formal like that. Perhaps that's not necessary, but um, some of those pictures that were shown to, to us, I think, to this body should be particularly troubling if they, if they exist like that just last weekend. So much no we'll we'll much definitely take it under advisement. Thank you. Okay, if nothing else, we'll move on to 6A. That is the uh, PLD agreement. <laughs> Bill, I know we have a couple of teams here that uh, <coughs> Mr. Dwight, Shane, and Mr. Sheets here. Mr. Chairman, uh, I, would, I would like to let Dwight uh, give, a, give a little presentation and tell, him, tell us where, where, we, where we are now, how did we get here from, from the mitigation uh, budget. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> Councilwoman Casso and gentlemen, uh, 
we are here today because we had entered a MOU with the East Ascension Gravity Drainage District several years ago to do the Laurel Ridge levee extension. And uh, what we have is we are very close to getting a permit to commence construction. And just for everybody to understand, what we have is we have agreed to do the engineering, the land acquisition for right-of-ways, what have you, the mitigation, and also the construction management. We will be the uh, permittee, which we've applied for the permit, and we're very close. We, we're probably 60 days away once we get the mitigation settled. Uh, now, what we've, what we've come across is we have a very limited mitigation bank available to us. The Corps of Engineers has provided us with a, a, a list of mitigation banks available, and we had budgeted $3.5 million to satisfy the mitigation requirements for uh, this project. The mitigation requirements came in at about $4.4 .4 million. And part of the reason was we have uh, very limited banks available to do our coastal, to do our bottomland hardwoods, and to do our cypress. And uh, one of the things that's kind of ironic that I have with me, as you mentioned, uh, Commissioner Sheets, who's the vice president, and basically he's the acting president now, the Pontchartrain Levy District. Uh, he and I were supposed to be in D.C., but due to the hurricanes and other issues, we, uh, we chose you guys instead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and one of the things that we talk about every time I if we find an audience with the Congress is how difficult it is to do projects because of the mitigation requirements. The mitigation requirements require us to do the same thing as any developer or anybody is trying to make a private buck to do private to do public projects, which you, you guys know about. And what, what, what's really bad about that is we get this thrown on us and we have limited options. It's a seller's market. And we had basically one option for our bottomland hardwoods. We had one option for our cypress. We had one option for our coastal. So. It's, it's, it's tough for us, and, and that's something we hammer Congress <coughs> with, to, to, to hammer the core with. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't, but we, we, we're going to always hammer them. I know uh, Councilman Kluat's been up there hammering as well, and we've talked Beat to them. Beat them up. <laughs> so where we at now is we came back with, we did uh, RFPs, and we came back with a $4.4 million cost. We've been able to reduce it to $4.262 million to satisfy our uh, mitigation requirements. At this point, if we do that, we can go ahead and we can, we can move forward. And within 60 days, I'm told by our engineers um, that we should have the permit available and begin the process to, to do construction. As you know, this was a very affected area <coughs> with uh, Ascension Parish in the August 2016 floods. The, the Law Ridge levee extension it would, would have protected some people. Um, we, we have this project ready. We're ready to move forward. We need to do the mitigation. Pontchartrain Levee District, as you may know, is, a, is about a $10 million a year entity. Our primary responsibility is to take care of the Mississippi River levee. That's by federal statute. That's what we do. Uh, we also have some other obligations. We've made a big attempt to try to get involved in Ascension Parish because you are our biggest taxpayer. Okay, we get about three and a half <coughs> million or so from you guys. Uh, to date, on this Law Ridge levy, we have paid everything. And uh, you've been very cooperative and been very supportive. But financially, we paid everything. We budgeted three and a half million. We thought that would work, but we didn't know we were going to be, we were going to have a gun to our head, if you would, to negotiate the mitigation. That's where we at. So what we asking is for you guys to pick up the balance over and above the three and a half million, which is roughly seven hundred sixty-two thousand dollars, so that we can get the mitigation. 
get, get the permit, and then start the project. And the way that works is once the permit is obtained, we would then start real estate acquisition. We'd let out the construction. We'd do the construction. And at the end of the day, we're going to turn this project over to you guys to, for the operation and maintenance long term. And uh, we, we, we're a small entity, but we're a big area. So we have two uh, commissioners that's from Ascension Parish, and we've made a big effort to help Ascension Parish because you are our biggest taxpayer, uh, our biggest client, if you would. You talk like a lawyer here. Uh, and, and so what we're asking today is that if you guys would be amenable to paying the 762000 so that we can close out this mitigation and move forward with the permit and give some relief primarily to the, to the Santa Mar in, in that area with the Laurel Ridge levy extension. Um, you all know we have other projects. We're trying to do the same type of uh, concept. You know, we get out there, we do, we do the um, <coughs> engineering, we do the permitting, we do that kind of stuff. We can't afford to build them, but we can, we can really try to get out there and get them shovel ready so that you guys can build them. And that's what we're trying to do on Laurel Ridge. And we really need your help to get this pushed through and get our, uh, get our permit ready. And in such, we would need, the, uh, we would need that, that, that money. And uh, so I'm here asking for, I got Commissioner Blaine Sheets, who's the, who's the vice president in, in, in name only. He's really, <laughs> he's running the deal. And, and uh, Mr. Glenn Shaheen is actually the uh, consulting engineer. engineer and his assistant, Tim Cole, is, is there. And um, any questions you would have for me or them or whatever. Uh, Mr. Kluwatz, anxiously waiting here, man. <laughs> Are we still looking at, based on the meetings we've had, and I know you, you even at those meetings you said you were going to renegotiate, and so now you're looking at a lesser dollar, but do we, I think we need to go ahead fall with the one million not to exceed. I'm kind of proud of myself, Commissioner. <laughs> go I mean, ahead, that's the challenge, brother. Because I, I, I saved $216,500 with a gun to my head <laughs> because they do not have to negotiate with us the biggest thing when I called them, you're going to release me from my price? Because one of the things we did was ask them to hold their price mm -hmm. for 45 days because public bodies, we can't move as quick as individuals. And what we've been able to do is save that amount of money uh, to go forward and, and, and get the mitigation done. So uh, we, we're ready to go. We have purchase agreements waiting. Uh, and and basically the figure went basically down. Um, That's what I'm asking. sixteen thousand dollars. So so w what are you asking for exactly tonight? Oh, uh, <coughs> seven hundred thousand, seven hundred sixty-two thousand three hundred dollars. I, I just can't believe that that we can. You know, I, I don't want anything to hold this up, and I, I don't want it to be a penny short when it goes forward. So if we do a not to exceed. Yeah, we'll do $762,400. <laughs> 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 hey, we'll no. never get that permit. With no, that, I think we, we, we have those agreements in place. We have them in place. Uh, we, we talked about a million dollars. It wasn't quite a million. It was about 900-something thousand, and we – We've reduced it down. We got we got three and a half million. We have checks ready, uh, or we have a check ready, I guess, for for the Pontrain Levy District. What we need is the uh, the balance, which would be seven sixty two, three hundred, seven sixty two thousand three hundred. With that, I'll make that motion that. Well, this before you make a motion, since y'all added this to the agenda, you need to open up a public comment period. Okay. Before y'all start making motion. All right. Go ahead, and, and we'd like, I'd like to go ahead and make sure we get in, uh, administrations. If Bill, you have anything to add to this? No. In fact, we're anticipating uh, adding some money to it, but what uh, we need to do as part of the motion is to approve the um, allocation of this money for that and to uh, amend the 2016-17 uh, budget 
uh, to allow for uh, mitigation uh, costs because we took it out of the 2017 budget because we didn't think we needed it uh, for mitigation, but we need to add it back to the 2017 budget. Mr. Add Chairman. 762. Add 762 back in. Yes. <coughs> Mr. Johnson. Uh, uh, we're going to have to do that, but I thought we'd have to come back with a budget ordinance amending that. It's got to go to the board. Yes, but, yeah. but we have yeah. already submitted everything to finance. They're writing everything as, according to what I submitted. Uh, so I got to go back to finance and, and readjust it. It'll be part of that, but you're telling the administration right. to revise our estimate of money needed for 2017 okay. and uh, to allocate this as part of the 2017 budget amendment when finance does take it. Okay. Bring it to you. I'll make a motion to open a public hearing. Second. Motion by Mr. Johnson, second by Ms. Terry. Anyone wishing to speak on this agenda item, please come up. Motion to close. Motion to close by Mr. Sadley. Second. Second by Mr. Kyle Lambert. Motion Oop. to move the ordinance. Moved by Mr. Second. Kluat. Second. Second by Mr. Johnson. Quick discussion. Any, any, any discussion? Quick discussion. Mr. Kluat. First of all, I want to thank everybody on both sides of the street that worked hard on this. Uh, we were waiting a long time for this. So when we're going to sit in front of the public and, and on TV and everything, and, and, and I was just so excited a couple weeks ago and last week to, to be able to even say that we could possibly lo be looking at a permit in 60 to 90 days, okay? Because as Mr. Wu said, it's just basically you move the budget back because there was no anticipation based on everything. And uh, so we just appreciate the hard work on everybody's part in getting us to this thing. And I just want to take about uh, about a minute of your time to once more uh, uh, beat up whoever wrote the mitigation rules and regulations and enforced it down on the people. Um, and I mention this every time I go to Washington, D.C. and uh, many of phone calls and different things on the side. This is personal highway robbery to everybody that needs help. Uh, and as a public body, we all serve, we represent people. And uh, what Mr. Poirier said was exactly correct. There's, um, I'm gonna just pull it off, off, off the cuff, but the fact is that if you're saying that you think that it averages when we started working on a project or even earlier this year, and you're looking at 25,000 to $40,000 an acre, then somebody knows that they're the only show in town based on the rules and regulations and everything that's being enforced from Washington, D.C. through the Corps of Engineers and all the different mitigation bank rules. They're the only show in town. So they, they have the liberty, and apparently it's legal, for them to jack a price up to fifty to $60,000, $70,000 an acre. And there's nothing you can do about it. You have no recourse. That, that is so wrong, it's pathetic. Because mitigation is, is becoming way in the double digits, and it's going to probably round out to be somewhere between 22 to 20 to, to 28 percent of the total project costs for this. And we're really not, we're not appropriating, expropriating, or taking that much wetland, okay? <coughs> we're not making a penny. We're not going to put no, no fine boat launches and riverside estates and stuff like that. We're just trying to keep people from flooding. And once more, we need to look at the major projects. This is a project that may have not stopped the magnitude of the water that came in August of 2016, but it would have slowed the process down and gave time for preparations and, and made the move and time for more water to go out. And we need to continue to move forward in, from D.C. on down to here on the major projects. The co diversion is viable. Uh, uh, our congressman and all, we talked about several ways that we can we can pull some money. While we're trying to save e everybody house by house by house with, with FEMA money and, and stuff, uh, grab some monies and go get some of these major projects done. Uh, the Ameet River that silted in, uh, Lori's Levy Extension would help, uh, Highway 22 Bridge, get the pros and cons of that, but that would evacuate it, let some water go down before it comes over the levee, you know. And, you know, just, just, it goes on and on down. 
But this mitigation is truly ridiculous, and I hope after my monologue tonight they don't pull back on the offer. Believe, man, you've said enough. Let's <laughs> <laughs> move on, Mr. Terry. This is a Saints game, ready? Come on. <laughs> Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate very much what the PID is doing, and I certainly support this effort to assist the folks who out, out in that area that need the law was levied bill. I, I need your help, as we have discussed several times now. Also need, needing to be shovel ready is the dredging of Bayou Manchac and the Frog Bayou Fish Bayou Project. I know that, that Bill has been working on this. I know that you all are, are his partner in that. And so I'm asking everybody to focus on this thing and help us to make progress in a real big way on those two things. And, and, and of course, the dredging of Bayou Manchac is new to my discussion because since 2016, it has obviously be become evident that fixing frog and fish is not going to help dramatically until we can do something about the dredging of Bayou Manchac and that the height of that tributary off of William Lee River created such dramatic problems for my folks there. Of course, we cannot do a thing about the lower A meet. That is something that the rest of you have to focus on. But I, I'm going to support this. I look forward to supporting it, and I hope that we can do the same soon on Bayou Manchac and Fish and Frog Bayou. Good deal. Mr. Mr. Sadley? Yes, Mr. Chairman, could you just please uh, restate the motion um, that uh, out loud that's on the table? Is it for the 762000 even or any not to exceed money? Because I heard something about a little bit, and, and then Randy originally said a million. We, we're going to let Mr. Rue bring that out. Uh, go ahead and finish up, Dwight. What are we voting it's, on? It's $762,300. Okay. Right. And uh, that will be... Uh, an amount requested to the and you're, you're comfortable with that, Mr. Poirier, right? Yes, sir. I, I have agreements in place for that. So, uh, upon receipt of that, we will we will submit the contracts to the Corps of Engineers. At which point, they'll approve our uh, mitigation requirements. At which point, the permit will be forthcoming. Can we just approve this money tonight, or do we need to have a cooperative endeavor agreement with the PLD? We have one. We, we have one, but we, we probably could have a amendment or an additional one uh, with that that I can. Uh, so should we make that part of the motion, Mr. Chairman? I would, That's let, let's leave it. Let's leave it at the 762. And it, just in case if something else comes up out of this. I know you're on a tight schedule, right? That's why we. Yes, that's sir. why we're yes, pushing sir. this right now. I, I would suggest uh, the the, the, we, the parish and our finance department will not release the check until a revised uh, no. agreement is written and given to them. But we don't need a vote of the council telling us to do it. But that's part of our standard operate procedure. But when we get it, right. they will give it to finance and finance uh, with the motion that y'all made. Uh, and that document, they will release the check, you know. I want to clear to Mr. Sadler that is part of my motion. We okay. talked about it earlier. But Thank you, Mr. Will adjust Thank you, Mr. Will amend it. Thank you. And and due to the, the time restraint, we, we if you have to have a special meeting, if something needs to come back, we will have please do not hesitate. Yeah. This is the closest we've we've been on billing a levy, okay? Very let's 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 very let's close. let's move on this pretty quick. Is there any other discussion on uh, this, the PLD agreement? Any other discussion? If not, any opposition? You got a motion from me. Who you get your second? From? Uh, Mr. Uh, Johnson. Okay. If there's no uh, opposition, motion passed. Thank you, Mr. Poirier. Mr. Pro I would just Chairman. like to comment to, to Councilwoman Casso that we are working and we understand that it is a regional approach and one of the benefits of Pont Strain Levy District is we represent six parishes. We, we, we small in money, but we large in uh, geography. And we understand, just like traffic, drainage is a regional approach. And we are working on that, and we certainly appreciate your input, anybody's input on that. And we're certainly going to do everything we can to help you and the, the folks in your district, like we talked about, to, to get that done. So thank, thank you. you so much.
And, and, and thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you so much gentlemen. for your time. And Mr. Chair, on that note about uh, by your man Shack, I can tell you that President Natasha and I met with uh, Mayor, Mayor President Broom and her and Iberville Parish uh, uh, Parish President and uh, the West Baton Rouge Parish President last week. And the major topic of our conversation was by your man Shack and a regional approach to solving some of the problems of the uh, August uh, 2016 flood. And they all agree that uh, we need to participate equally. Uh, at least East Baton Rouge and us, uh, on Bayou Manshack. And uh, in fact, we're planning a meeting between myself and Mr. Rayford on uh, getting more details on it. And also, they have chosen HNTB as their engineer for floodplain, uh, a floodplain management type program, very similar to what we're doing. And we're going to be working together with them on coming up with standards that uh, is equal of both sides of Bayou Manshack. Okay. Very good news. Yes, that's the first time we've had them come to the table, so that's that's really good. All right, with, uh, with that being said, we'll move on to our general business, number seven, the results from the recommendation from the non-engineering professional selection. Mr. Yes, sir, you have the documents uh, in, in your packet, and uh, the top three scores, scores uh, in this process was ELOS Environmental, number one, um, Providence Engineering, number two, and Coastal Environmental, number three. Uh, we recommend hiring all three, or uh, coming into an um, indefinite delivery contract with all three, and so we can get a lot of work done. And if one is, is not able to perform, we'll go to the other. I move Make we adopt motion. the recommendation. Second. Second. Motion. Moved by Mr. Aaron, second by Mr. Bill. Any uh, discussion? Any opposition? Not motion passed. We'll move on to number eight, renewal of annual contracts. Mr. Rue? Yes, sir. These are some annual contra contracts with uh, some uh, professional services and engineering groups that we presently are using, and we're in the process of uh, have projects with them ongoing right now. And uh, those uh, engineering firms, and I like to take one at a time, um, so we're asking for renewal of a contract with H. Davis Co. Engineering. So Moved move by Mr. Todd Lambert, second. second by Mr. Johnny K. Any opposition? <coughs> Motion passed. Uh, renew the contract, uh, engineering contract with HNTB. Motion. Second. Moved by Mr. Bill, second by Mr. Aaron. Any discussion? If not, motion passed. And the next four are our surveying group that is uh, we really involved with now with our subdivision ditches and, and uh, some uh, projects going on Move there. to renew all four. Move on, Mr. Bill. And I let for the uh, record, it's Earls and Associates, Brant Hammond Surve Survey, and BFM Survey, and Quality Second. Engineers. Second. Second by and Johnny. T. Baker Smith. All right. Yeah. There's actually there's five. There's five. There's five. There's actually five. 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 Yes. Motion to renew five. The second. Move second. by Mr. Bill. Second by Mr. Johnny. Any opposition to the motion? Not passed. And the last one is Paul Amado for Bridge and Bulkhead. Second. Second. Move on, Mr. Todd. Second by Mr. Randy. Mr. Cazzo and Randy on Mr. Paul yeah. Lamando. <laughs> Any opposition? None. Motion passed. Number nine, additional to uh, uh, dump track, dump truck contractors. Mr. Yes, sir. We, we're in a bind. We've been in a bind for a little while now with some uh, truck, uh, dump truck services. Uh, it's holding back some projects. Uh, so far, we have a, a recommendation from, uh, to add JDR Dirt Services. So moved. Second. Second. Got an amendment to that. We and have if, amendment. Yeah, if we have any, if you know of any other, we welcome any additional uh, uh, truckers that may be. I'd like to amend it to, to add uh, J Quad Trucking, uh, Mr. Terrence Johnson, uh, and Mr. Mr. Uh, Turner has an uh, amendment uh, addition also. O W, <coughs> excuse me, O W J Trucking as well. Yeah, but, yeah I'm gonna call you right back. J Quad. J Quad and O W J Trucking. Oh, hold on, just a second. O W J. Hold on, before we go any further. Do we have the the insurance and? Well, we we gotta take we, that as part of our okay. process. We we uh, send all the paperwork. They come in, got to sign everything, produce right. the documents. You're gonna and have if that that motion. Is good. Yeah. We go forward with it. Okay. You got it, Deb? All right, that was moved by Mr. Turner. No, well, I made the I'm motion. I'm sorry. And I'm a second. Well, 
No All problem. right, move up to be a second on the tracks. They had these two trucking companies and do the do the required checks for them. Any opposition to the motion? If not, motion passed. We're going to move on to number 10, approval uh, to advertise. Mr. Rue? Yes, sir. We've been using Durable Piling Company to uh, come in and do a reinforcement of our piling system using uh, Teflor and chemical mm -hmm. uh, injection. Uh, they only had a renewal for the two years, and so we had to, uh, we need to advertise for that uh, process again. We have to go through a, the RFQ, RFP, and we just asked the record uh, authorization to Motion. go through the process. Motion, second. Moved by Mr. Randy, second by Mr. Johnny. Any opposition to the motion? If not, motion passed. This is a big one. Approval to, uh, to advertise, Mr. Rue. Yes, sir. What uh, we discussed at, at once before, I think, uh, because the council wishes for the, the parish to be involved with uh, uh, single covert or single crossing um, entrance into personal property uh, driveways, um, we don't have the personnel to do it. We think it's a more um, efficient way is to uh, advertise for contractors similar to the contract truck drivers and the dump okay. truck Sorry. professionals to come in and be on a list that we can recommend to, to uh, install these coverts. Moved by Mr. Benny, second by Mr. Johnny. Any opposition? If not, motion passed. You have a discussion? Mr. Just discussion, not opposition. Okay. Bill, when will that list be available? I personally have a need there, as you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Um, well, this is giving me approval to advertise. So we're putting out the advertising to individuals interested in participating. Okay. And then once that list comes back to us, uh, we evaluate them, and then we'll bring that list, similar to a truck driver, so we bring that for, to actually approve the contracts. So then citizens such as myself can contact you, you, your office and ask for um, the process, uh, not a recommendation, but the, uh, the name of the names of the people on the list. Actually, the, the process will be uh, with, similar to a permit, where you come to the office and you say, I want a drive, I need a driveway covered, right. uh, my, my first one. Uh, we issue a permit, we tell you what size it needs, and we do the evaluation of how it's set. Uh, then we have a list that we will call mm -hmm. uh, one of these contractors and schedule them to go and install the cover. We pay for the contractor. So, so the parish it. will pick and pay the contractor, and the homeowner only right. has the All cost of the culvert. All they have to culvert. do, instead of sending our own person out there, a, a DPW person, we call up one of available contractors issue and get a scheduled date. They, we notify the property owner somebody will be there at this date, and they just have to have the covers out there ready to be installed. The contractor goes install it, gives us an invoice, which would be a standard price across the board, right. uh, and we pay the invoice. Excellent. Thank you. Good. Another discussion, Mr. Clue. Real quick, Bill, and uh, we, of course, will have a we'll have a check. There's a balancing check system or something. Oh, no, we, we go back and have to yeah. check. Yeah. Through yeah. the permit yeah. process, we go back and make sure it's installed properly. Yeah. And, uh, and in some cases, it works pretty well like this because we can hold the contractor uh, accountable. And if he, if he uh, for lack of a better term, keeps messing up, screwing up, we go to another contractor. He's off the list. So we, that's our check and balance to make sure it's done right. What, what about the insurance requirements? Is you going to have to be truck. all the workers' comp and all the good, all that stuff? Similar to our dump truck drivers. And, and, yeah, uh, yeah, because that's they'd be handing equipment. In our last discussion, I know right. And I know Mr. Sadler is wondering, you know, but there's several, comp. There's several contractors out there waiting for this, okay? That's right. They do that, that's all right? On the table. And uh, so, yeah, that's going to be the thing is the insurance requirements. And do you Mr. Toss. And, Bill, this is <laughs> Parish Roads only? Yes, sir, Parish Roads as of right now. Okay. Oh, no straight roads. Pretty much that. Okay. So any, any other discussion on this? Dots on well, the state road. We are no, no, no this is in front of my house, uh, Mr. Clue, on a parish-owned road. <laughs> yeah. Man, let's, let's Greenbrier let's Avenue, for the record, <laughs> not Highway 427, also known as Perkins Road. Yeah. All right, with, with no other discussion and no opposition, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> Number 12, another approval for advertising. Mr. Rue? Yes, sir. We're asking for approval to advertise the reconstruction of four timber bridges along Bird Island Ditch. So moved. Due move to channel Mr. improvements. Second. Second by Mr. Terry. Any uh, opposition? 
Second none. Motion passed. Thank you for that. And number 13, Mr. Johnny, you have a request for bulkhead? Yeah, Mr. System? Daniel Magoo Migliori is mm -hmm. on uh, Francois Bayou by uh, Buddy Gore. Uh, Cessna subdivision, right. he's requesting the same thing that others have. Oh, right. It's going to protect from erosion and, and actually get the water moving. Right about a Ponderosa. Right. You have that bill, put them on the list? Yes, sir. Okay. With that, number 14. Motion. Motion by Mr. Right. 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 Right.